All right. Here are some uh, more questions from the family practice specialty rotations. Some quick questions. Uh, these set of questions are related to cortical symptoms. So the first question is that if there is gradual disturbance or difficulty in speech or pronunciation of some words, what may be the level and cause? And there are some also other speech related questions that I will get to in a minute. Um, it's interesting in this question, there are two different uh, components or aspect of speech production that are being asked. The first one is uh, difficulty in speech. And the second one is difficulty with pronunciation of some words. So it's important to separate these two aspects of speech out and not get confused by them. The production of speech in the brain or generation of words, understanding of words and, and thinking of what words you want to say is called um, phasia or lack of those is called aphasia or lack of uh, phasia or generation of the words. Now that generation, uh, that generated speech in your mind, you can think in your brain, um, you can write it down, uh, you can gesture it. Um, all of that is the expression of that speech, um, you know, like written expression. Uh, however, when you speak them out loud, that process is called articulation and the abnormality of that process is called dysarthria. These two are separate things. Um, aphasia is lack of speech production in mind that may be represented by uh, lack of speaking, lack of writing and things like that. While the actual production of the sound of words or pronunciation is the articulation or dysarthria. The generation of sound or phasia or aphasia, lack of generation is in the cortex in the brain, while the articulation is down here in the brain stem of the cranial nerves that are involved in generation or articulation of the sound. So brain stem strokes will give you dysarthria, articulation problem, while the cortical strokes will give you aphasia, problem with the speech pr production. And related to that is the question is that, uh, is sensory aphasia reading and writing impaired? Uh, so sensory aphasia is when the sensation of speech, meaning hearing or of the speech is uh, not understood. That's the sensory component of aphasia, right? The opposite, which is the actual generation of the words will be motor aphasia. Now, these are not accurate terms, sensory aphasia, motor aphasia, sensation, uh, or, you know, you can say hearing of the sound is a sensation or, or looking at the picture of a word is a sensation, but it, it's not sensation in the sense that we're talking about in speech production. You can still hear the sound, you don't know what it means, so it's not that you're not getting the sensation. But, you know, that's the closest term that came up with, uh, the experts came up with hundreds of years ago and we still use it. So, uh, not being able to understand the input is global because problem is not with the input itself. The problem is with the processing of all inputs coming in into meaning of those words. Um, and it will be present for reading. It will be present for writing. It will be present for, uh, for hearing itself. Uh, there could be special circumstances where hearing is not creating meaning, but that's not typically what we mean by aphasia, but, and let's not go into it. Uh, in general, sensory aphasia will impair everything. And motor aphasia is the production of sound where you understand what is being said, but you cannot create your own thought of words to either write or to either speak. Um, so the question is how to differentiate from history about understanding of speech. So that's, that's an interesting question. I guess um, we are uh, trying to ask that um, how to separate out sensory aphasia versus motor aphasia and in, in between which we call uh, uh, a global aphasia or conduction aphasia. So let's say you walk into the room and you ask the patient, you know, what day is it? And the patient says something that makes no sense to you. The question is that did the patient didn't understand what you're asking or patient understood and is trying to produce an answer and the production of answer is not happening. Um, there are many ways to try to go about it. Um, you can try to uh, give them 
available sets of answer to pick from. So for example, you can take a picture of uh, different fruits and vegetables. You say, okay, point to me which one is an apple, point to me which one is an orange, point to me which one is a banana. And pa patient can take those predetermined answers and pick one without having to produce a, a word apple. They can actually point to an apple. They know which one is apple. You can also give them tasks that does not require speech production. So for example, you can say, show me two fingers with your right hand or touch your left ear with your right thumb, right thumb, left ear. These are complicated instructions. And if the patient is not able to understand your speech, then they will not be able to follow them. And you, uh, especially if you don't show them, they can mimic sometime and that can fool you. So when you're testing for their understanding, do not show them what you're asking them to do. So you can say, okay, with, with your hands crossed, you can say, show, touch your left ear with your right thumb and, and see if they're able to do it or, or not. Now, the challenge with this uh, and other speech assessment is that you cannot, this, this, you cannot diagnose someone with aphasia if they're confused. If they're significantly confused and disoriented, you cannot say patient is aphasic. Just like if the patient is unconscious, you cannot say patient is aphasic. You don't know because patient is unconscious. Same is true for confusion. It may be that they are not, it's not that they're not understanding your speech, they're not understanding anything. And that's why, you know, the patients who are only aphasic have a coherent thought. They know what day is it, is it morning or night, when they need to eat, when they need to sleep, and uh, where's the door, they can walk out, walk in, they cannot communicate, but they can do everything. Um, it's like being deaf and mute, but uh, confused patient, of course, cannot do any of these. So that was the sensory aphasia. Uh, preset determined task section does not require speech. And if the patient is not able to get them, that sensory aphasia or global aphasia, if the patient is able to get them, then it's, um, um, uh, it's a motor aphasia if the, if the speech production. Now, actually, there's layers to it. You then go on to see if it's a conduction aphasia or motor aphasia. Conduction aphasia is that when you give them a, a, a task or a question, they understand what the question is, but and they can speak normally, but the, the, the input coming in and the output that they're generating are not connecting. So they talk about unrelated stuff. So you, you say, um, you know, what day is it today? And they may say, oh, I had for breakfast something. Or they may start with today or just like, you know, on the Friday we go on for a walk or something like that. So they're kind of getting what you're trying to say. They're trying to produce an answer. They have an intelligent speech, but they're not connected. Your question and answer are not connecting. And you can check it's because it, this could be from a sensory aphasia that they're speaking uh, intelligent speech, but not related to what you're talking about. And if it's due to sensory aphasia, then if you ask them, with a predetermined set of answers, right? You know, something to pick from, point to be able to pick up the glass or, you know, touch your knee or raise your right arm up. They should not be able to do it if it's a sensory aphasia. If it's a conduction aphasia, they would understand those tasks. They can do it, but still they cannot answer it, although they are able to speak, but the two are not connecting. And the motor aphasia is when they're not able to speak. So they speak gibberish. They make up words. They could be neologism. They create words. They can have paraphrasic errors, so these are called table, a cable, or something. All sorts of variations are possible, but the speech is not a coherent, intelligent speech. So in a sensory aphasia, a patient will keep on talking what they want to talk about, what are they thinking, what they think you're asking, and all of that makes sense. It's just not related to what you're asking, and that's a sensory aphasia with a good speech. Motor aphasia, bad speech, and it's just... You could sit there and listen to for five minutes and you, you cannot make sense of what they're trying to communicate to you. And conduction is that they can understand the task, they can speak intelligently, but they're not connecting. What you ask, they cannot answer. That's the conduction aphasia. Now, there are two other categories uh, of aphasias, which are called transcortical sensory and transcortical motor, but we will not go into that.